Hello and welcome, I'm finally back, so I'm going to be making videos again. Uh, I did take some time off, um, and I also started up my work again since Corona, uh, coronavirus um, you know, restrictions were withdrawn from the UK, uh, which is where I'm from, obviously. Uh, so yeah, this guy's going to be on money making, uh, very well awaited, um, obviously everyone wants to make money. Uh, I'm going to do top five and perhaps to even do some honourable mention or mentions. So here we go, number one. So oh, we're going to start off with number one. This is the one that I personally think uh, makes the most money. Uh, it's probably one of the most exciting ones, uh, but it's only really recommended once you hit past level 220 uh, and probably have better gear as well. So this is purely to do with camping uh, super rares, what they're called. So in about, I think it was 2013, 14, um, what happened was forums actually released that there will be some rare spawn mobs that will drop incredibly rare items. Now, a lot of these items are actually extremely good um, however they are also extremely rare uh, a lot of them can be obtained by killing regular mobs and uh, those regular mobs actually act as placeholders for um, these these five star bosses that drop uh, better loot so for example one of them uh, are these so you kill these uh, these trolls in Karo so not the the five star ones next to where Maud spawns you want to kill these four stars uh, these release the possibility to drop um, what will drop a Hellforged bracelet this is the second best uh, melee DPS brace that you get uh, the first will actually be a uh, oh god what's it called now I can't even I can't even remember I've been away for so long but anyway the second will be in alchemical quarters uh, and that will be the best one uh, so this is what everyone's after um, I can't actually remember the name of it um, it drops from either of these corners so this one over here this one over here and apparently there's another spawn that just goes along this hallway and you have to kill the mages and they spawn a five star uh, now the five star will drop the brace it's the best um, possible um, melee DPS brace that you get uh, and in some servers they can sell for up to 50 mil. Uh, in some servers like Gwydion we actually don't have one yet, in Mabon they have one, in Epona I believe they have three uh, and other servers I don't really care about to be honest, sorry guys, um, and I just don't really know if I'm completely honest. So yep that's number one, that is our rare spawn mobs kills. Uh, just another one just to quickly put in there, uh, in Forbidden Halls where you kill units which is right at the end, uh, so the last room here. There's actually, if you just kill the um, the Yenox mobs, which is also very common to get these, uh, as it's a popular Lixing spot for about level 210, uh, they have an opportunity to drop uh, weapons of regeneration. Now, they don't go for the most amount of money, uh, but the bows uh, and the daggers do go for quite a bit in some servers, I believe. Um, obviously, servers that can't kill Gilly or uh, better bosses usually tend to really cherish these, along with um, stuff like uh, the embossed bows and embossed daggers of uh, mastery, which can be obtained from Crafty Gardens. Moving on to number two, these are called gold bosses. Now these are literally called gold bosses because they either drop uh, a vast amount of gold or they drop stuff that usually tends to go for a bit more. So the first one that, in my opinion, you really unlock is probably this level 20. He is a five or six star. He's not very difficult to kill and every single time he dies, he drops 1,000 gold approximately. Um, this guy has used to be camped a lot. People used to AFK and just sit here killing him consistently. It wasn't a bad idea, but it doesn't make the most amount of money. Uh, to maximize your profits, I would definitely uh, just do runs that include this guy. So this is the first one. So it obviously goes in a lot of tiers throughout the levels. There are plenty of gold bosses. I'm talking likely about 30 or maybe even more. Uh, this is definitely the first one to mention. Uh, and as you can see, someone's already killed him. I'm assuming it's well, all those level 100 peeping in the area. So the second one, we're going to go to Fingal's Cave. This is a very old school one. It doesn't make too much money now, um, but they're these five star bears that were known back in the day when I used to play in about 2013. Uh, they used to drop these rings. Now these rings are skill rings, very good for um, people that do stuff like PvP or even beginners. And the best thing about them is they have no requirement. So these guys usually drop uh, the ones that give about plus four, plus five. Uh, and let's just see. So there would usually be one in the place of this one as well, pourers. They're very easy to kill. Uh, they go up every five levels, I believe. So it's 45 to 60. Uh, let's see if we can find one uh, just for video reasons. And then we can move on. So that's the first cave, and they're only explicitly in a couple of ca uh, a couple of caves. I know where they all are, uh, purely because I used to camp them all uh, when I was a bit of a noob. So this is the second one, uh, and then we also have another one that's just over here, right at the bottom. I believe that's the highest level one. Another one here, and I believe that's it. But yeah, so those are all the gold bosses in Fingal's Cave. Then we move on to Caro. There's plenty in Caro. There's a spider, or oh, there's two spiders. Um, and then there's these weird bosses. So there's actually a weapon boss that very often spawns. Not many people kill it anymore because uh, it's actually quite difficult. Uh, it drops exiled weapons, um, which include hammer, dagger, bow, and other stuff. He's usually around here. 
as well as this in this room specifically there's actually another gold boss a five star that spawns around here it looks similar to these four star flame callers uh, he drops about three to five k uh, and sometimes he can give a piece of jewelry now i'm not too sure on the jewelry uh, but i'll look into it let me just find some more so they usually are popped around today i'm just pretty unlucky uh, and these are called gold boss runs there's another one called the war beast trainer it's a five star mob here now we can kill him quickly uh, and just show you guys see what we get so let's quickly just get rid of him. Now, actually, one of the, the reasons why I've been slacking a little bit recently is, uh, I don't know if you, know, you guys know Gwydion too well, uh, it's not too great for restoration bots. Uh, we don't really have too many of them, so if you do see me run out of energy, that'll be one of the reasons why for now. Uh, but like I said, if you're level 220, you can see, even as a ranger, very low armor, uh, not so resilient. These guys really aren't too difficult. It's a 5 star level 140, uh, and every single time he'll drop a nice loot. He's very AFKable if you do that, like if you stay at one or if you do your runs. Uh, and you'll notice they really aren't too difficult. So let's see what we get from this one. It should be a bit of gold. And there we go, a ring as well. It's only 77 gold, but we did get a ring from that one. Uh, let's just check in this cave. I believe there's a spawn in here also sometimes for a 5 star money boss. And there isn't one. So yeah, those are some of the possibilities that you get. Uh, and last but not least, this is probably the highest uh, level one that you get. This is in Corrupted Gardens. Now this one, not many people know about. And no, I'm not talking about the factions bosses, which are also uh, often spawned in this place. So you will get these five star faction bosses. One of them does spawn here, which is on the way. And look, there it is. So that's actually technically a gold boss, uh, but it also gives quite a lot of flavor. Now those have an opportunity to drop very good um, lure rings, uh, like for pierce lure and stuff like that, which any class can use. Uh, anyway, here's the gold spot I was mentioning. If you kill these, uh, eventually a gold boss will spawn in this area. It will look just like one of these. It'll be five stars. It's relatively difficult. Uh, I'm not too sure what level it is, but yeah, that's it. So that's number two. So those are gold boss runs. So moving on to number three, we're going to only keep this one nice and quick, so we keep the video a bit shorter. Uh, we're going to be talking about cooking. So cooking has a lot of varieties of ways that you can make money. Most notably, we have the making of barrel burps. Now, if anyone plays regularly on a high level tune, they will automatically pretty much know what a barrel burp is. Uh, barrel burps are DPS food, so well, mainly DPS food. So these guys increase your pierce damage as well as giving you some uh, regeneration. Now you can use these as as low as level 120, which is seriously OP, uh, and usually probably give your damage another third extra, even with um, a tier one. So with tier twos, as you can imagine, a lot better, and with tier threes, even more so. so as you can see, they, they fetch a pretty penny uh, in most servers. Uh, I know some servers, they are a lot less, like in Mabon, because it's such, um, such a big market, and there's so many people that actually sell them uh, that they're quite cheap there. I believe they go for about 1.1K, uh, whereas in Gwydion, they can go for anything up to 1.4K for tier ones. And tier twos, they usually go for around 2K, and tier threes, they can go four, five, sometimes even 8k depending on how desperate the buyer is. Uh, other notable foods that you can make uh, are like chocolate and layers to see if there are any in the auction house. They're on. Um, but yeah, uh, also whoever that is, uh, Goddess of War. Uh, so yeah, my, my brother does play. I have a twin brother called uh, Dan. His in-game name is actually Sir Danver. So if you see him in either Mabon or William, just drop him a message to tell him hello. Um, so his name is Sir Danver, which I will obviously write out. So yeah, if you see them. And uh, yeah, for cooking, that's one way to make money. As well as this, you can also pick up wheat uh, and barley and other ingredients, which have been mentioned in a previous video that I have, which is in my hints and tips videos. So yeah, that's cooking, that's number three. So we've got number four. Now this is what I'm gonna just call supply and demand. So usually uh, there'll be chats external from uh, Celtic Heroes, whether it's Line or uh, whatever the other one's called, I don't really know. Some people use Facebook chats even, or Discord, whatever. They usually supply sell chat and people are often after certain things. Now some of these things may include killing these to get uh, what you will have as corrupted barbs. Now those corrupted barbs will make um, purification potions. These are for killing BT um, and they help a lot. It just gets rid of like the effect that has when you stand there. Uh, another thing as well, oh, by the way, those pots will sell for about 4 to 5k, at least in Gwydion. Uh, anyway, next thing is Corrupted Blossoms. As you can see, it takes little to no effort, just need level 180 requirement. You just pick these bad boys and they sell for quite a decent amount in bulk. And the reason being, people use them to level between 180 and 185. Uh, you just turn them in. Uh, also the same with Corrupted Barbs, if you have them. The third thing, so in Corrupted Gardens alone. So if you kill these Lich or Reavers, uh, they actually have a chance of dropping either Ossified Shards. Um, well, let me just find it. Got a very messy inventory, so 
So yeah, you've got these ossified shards and you also get chunks. Now these bad boys sell for quite a bit. Uh, people get pretty desperate because it takes a fucking long time uh, to do the quest to get Lich Favor. Uh, or Reaver fav Favor, not Favor. Um, so you just do these quests. At tier 3 you'll get the weekly quest which enables a lot. It allows you to get your upgraded... Um, well, your upgraded withers which are very very useful as they are the best in game slot for every single class um, and it also gives you the availability to get these awesome bodies which have the little flags behind them uh, this one's not from the quest uh, well not from the quest you actually get some store my one's a little bit different it's uh, a runic one so this is actually able to be quite bought and sold so this is the normal one non-trade it's cost 100k looks pretty standard the only difference between mine and that one is mine has a little purple glow that comes up randomly uh, you'll see in just a moment yeah, mine is completely tradable. Uh, I believe it's the only one, the only active one in most servers at the moment. Made, there may be like three or four total. Uh, however, I think there's only two active, including this one. Yeah, you'll see the little purple glow. Everyone asks in my videos, where does it come from? It comes from this body. So yeah, that's number four. Those are what I call supply and demand. Other things in this, just to quickly note, include training manuals, rings, um, or even people sometimes camp Aggie for specific Aggie items like lure rings. Uh, you'll have a whole load of these, so people specifically ask for stuff, you look up what drops it, and you just go kill it until you get it, and hopefully someone pays a lot of money for it. So yeah, that's number four, supply and demand. Oh, we are on to number five. This is going to be merching or flipping. So this has many different names, uh, people have learned from many different games, servers, etc. Uh, this purely just entails usually the auction house or buying and trading from other players. Uh, okay. Um, and you just buy items and sell it for more. So you want to always look out for items. Oh god. No, I'm not. Anyway, so you look at uh, buying items and selling it for more. So in this instance, let's say you bought this skull, skull, uh, rift skull bracelet, and you bought it for 5k, and someone was looking for one or buying better gear, and you just said, uh, do you know what? I can sell it to you for 30k. That is still flipping. Uh, if you want to buy it in bulk items, which is what most better flippers do when they're a bit more experienced, let's say these restoration pots were going for cheap. Let's say they were going for 5 GP each, and then you sold them each for 50 GP each, and you got yourself a hell of a bargain. Uh, or even super knowledge elixirs, they go for about th uh, 3k each usually. If you find someone selling it for 2k each, that's 1k each per profit. So that's literally a third extra profit onto whatever you sell, etc, uh, etc. Et it goes on and on. So one of the also hidden way, uh, methods of making money whilst flipping is with fashion. Now, unfortunately, I have shitloads of fashion. I'm very badly organized. Uh, usually just build sets, and if you build a set, it tends to sell for a hell of a lot more because people don't have to hunt for the pieces. So for example, um, let's take pink because I have a lot of pink stuff. If you can buy the individual pieces, let's talk about Frostguard because it's quite a, a sought after fashion. Uh, each piece is usually ooh, can go for about 5 to 30k maximum in Gwydion. I don't know about other servers. However, when you get the set, as soon as you hit the set, it's at least worth 50 to 100k. So obviously, that makes a lot of sense. If you can pick up these pieces and someone's after it and you build the set, you can make yourself a lot of money. Now, what does happen is people like me, unfortunately, lol, uh, we hoard lots of pieces of fashion in the hopes that we will eventually find pieces. And as this happens, more people hold on to more stuff and sets never get made. And individual pieces that are a bit rarer uh, end up selling for a lot more money. Uh, these are specifically in sets like Lanrick or um, Spooky Hunter, for example, or Sangol, which I also use. So yeah, that's flipping or merching. And that's number four. Uh, number five, sorry. On to honorable mentions. Now, this is my absolute favorite. These are for the hoarders, the people that don't give a fuck, have lots of inventory space and don't mind uh, cluttering their inventory like there's no tomorrow. So with this, you can pretty much uh, go and kill anything that seems a bit more interesting uh, and, and collect bulk like these guys. These drop meteoric items um, and we'll see if we get anything. Sometimes it will give uh, a little bit more gold. Sometimes it will give stuff like these quartzes. Now, if you collect these gems, usually people buy them in a set for the quest. Uh, you also get bosses like our boy over here. What's his name again? Uh, Artisol. Now he's quite a nice boss if you get the, the six star one. And uh, he drops a lot of stuff like red book covers. Now that's a crap drop, the Connach tunic. Uh, but anyway, uh, if you kill all the defectors, you get all the items. Uh, some people, they are collectibles. Some people just want to collect everything, keep it in their bank. Uh, everyone should know roughly what some of these uh, collectible bosses are like. You also got like the Fairy Queen, which drops some unique uh, fashion and armor. Uh, if I can find uh, Stonebell. But I haven't been here for a while. So if you go to Southern Dale, you go up here. Oh bit of sound. If you go up here, you've got the Fairy Queen. Sometimes you get Legacy Boss up here. It's very, very rare. Um, and the Fairy Queen. Oh, there it is. So the Fairy Queen usually drops nice stuff. Very random. Uh, it's usually fashion or a bit of armor or a weapon. Not this one here to be mistaken for. Uh, so let's see what she drops. Oh, so there you go. Look, a Fairy Diamond. So these sell for about 2k, I believe. We can check that out. So don't forget, Shalomon, um 
luxury shop sells all vendors items for the most amount of money so if we go to the vendor we can see god I'm sorry for my inventory again it's very very messy a lot of stuff uh, drag down please okay so for some reason it will not let me drag down that's interesting okay never mind Okay, so we've got our Fey Diamond, and there you go, it goes for 4k, just from an easy kill like that. Even at level, I don't know, 100 you can easily take out. And that's an easy 4k. Now let's say you're low on money, quickly want to make up some startup money to do some cooking or such, that would be a great thing to do. Uh, another thing in this honourable mention is obviously your Legacy Bosses. Now Legacy Bosses are hugely unpredictable, uh, however can also have a massive amount of profit. So one of the most notable Legacy Bosses that not many people know about is the old Shalaman Bosses. Now you get some 5 star Shalaman bosses that indeed do drop the Shalaman armor. Now most people think this is exclusive to 2012, it mostly was, in fact it was more common then, however they are still available now. So for example you get Konech Vanguard, you can dress up like these guys, uh, and it looks very cool, it looks very vintage and very cool and very nice, and these pieces in Gwydion alone sell for about 1 mil each, and the set can go for up to 10 mil. You also get Dark Flame armor, which can be in Dust, uh, I think it's Dust, dust Wither, uh, and those pieces can sell for about a mil each also. Uh, and there are a whole ton of other uh, legacy bosses that can uh, you can kill for better stuff as well, like Radiant Earthstone. Uh, that'll be the Earthstone Dragons, and those usually spawn in Karo, Murky Vaults, and others. So yeah, sorry for the long video, uh, lots to put in, want you guys to make lots of money, uh, and enjoy yourselves whilst playing, and not feel demoralised. So yeah, that was my final, um, and hope you guys get making lots of money, and enjoy the game, so bye.